Super Talk Mississippi, live from the Neshoba County Fair. We're so honored to have uh, with us now the governor of the great state of Mississippi, Tate Reeves. Uh, good morning, Governor. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Gerard. It's great to be here. It's great to be in Neshoba County. It's great to be on Super Talk. Yeah, well, we appreciate you joining us. It's getting a little hot and humid, but it's <laughs> July in Mississippi, and it's the Neshoba County Fair. We wouldn't have it any other way. Summertime <laughs> in the South. Summertime <laughs> in the South for sure. <laughs> All right, so you just uh, came off the stage uh, about an hour or so ago delivering your remarks, as is customary here at the fair for our elected leaders to do. What's uh, what's your central message uh, today, Governor? Well, you know, we, we talked about a, a number of things that are important, and, and a lot of times the, the press wants to talk about what's happened in the past. We want to talk about what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. And, and you know, um, in, in the past we, we've had... Uh, some challenges that came before us at state agencies. We've been doing the, the blocking and tackling of running state government during COVID. Uh, we've made a lot of progress as it relates to that. But as we look towards the future, we talked a, a lot today about uh, investing in our people um, because at the end of the day, um, that's what ultimately drives our economy and ultimately what drives uh, capital investment in our state. During 2020, Gerard, um, we saw $1.9 billion in capital investment in our state. And that compares to the 10 years prior average of a little less than $900 million. So we did 2x in 2020 during COVID than what we'd seen in the previous 10 years. And I'm proud of that fact, but I also have, have done the analysis and looked at why we were successful at that, and it's because of our workforce. Yeah. It's because we're seeing improvements in educational attainment levels. It's because we're seeing investments in our workforce development, workforce training centers, and job creators notice that. And they want to create good and higher and better paying jobs for our people because they know our people will deliver. And, and that's what really I, I was focused on. It's top of the list with every employer, uh, let's face it. It's, it's, their, it's their, no, their number one issue when they when they seek to locate, launch a, a new shop or, or expand into the state. It's, it's the top thing. What, what's the labor force look like? In, in the old days, um, and I've been doing this long enough, to, I can remember that uh, there was a time when all companies want to know is what's the incentives, what's yeah, the incentives, what's the incentives. Right. Now, they care about that now, but not nearly as much as they talk about the labor force and drive with this new administration in Washington, with the Biden administration, who wants to pay people to not work, uh, it's become even more prevalent and even more important. And that's the one good thing, uh, one one of the good things that we have in Mississippi going for us is we have a group of people that are willing to work. Yep. They, they take pride in having a job and providing for themselves and their families. And that's not necessarily true everywhere in the country. And so that gives us a competitive advantage. And and it's my responsibility and our responsibility to take advantage of, of those competitive advantages that we have. We've got to identify them and then take advantage of them. So you were among the first governors in the country, uh, Governor, to uh, essentially eliminate or terminate the extended, the enhanced unemployment benefits, $300 a week, coming from the federal government. June 12th, I think, was the last date, as I recall. Uh, have you seen an impact of that? Are you talking to employers? What do they say? Well, there's no doubt that there's been an impact from that. Um, it, it, there's been a major impact, not as, not not 100%, but certainly a, a major impact. And and it did it did go into full effect June 12th. I announced it in early May. And the reason I made that announcement in early May is because throughout the month of April, after the legislative session was over, I traveled all throughout Mississippi. I went to small towns and I went to the larger cities throughout Mississippi. Yeah. And the one thing that was constant was the help wanted sign. Everywhere. Everywhere. In every small manufacturer, in every mom and pop restaurant, in every large manufacturer, the one consistent thing is we can't get our people back to work because the federal government's paying uh, a fairly significant wage to not work. Competing with the government. We compete with the federal government, That's and the president brags about it. See, we're making those folks pay more money. <laughs> and, and look, he, he does. The, the president brags about it, and the unfortunate thing, Gerard, is he either is not competent enough or he just ignores the next step. And the next step is when you go to the grocery store, because the government is competing with the private sector for labor, when you go to the grocery store, you pay more for That's a exactly gallon of milk. Right. You pay more for a loaf of bread. <laughs> go buy gasoline and tell me how many more... Uh, uh, dollars a gallon you're paying at the fuel pumps today because inflation is real and the people who are getting the shaft because of inflation because of the policies of the Biden administration are the people in Mississippi who get up and put their boots on and go to work every day totally and that's agree. just wrong. Totally agree. Well I, I uh, for one as a Mississippian appreciate you terminating those benefits. I, I, honestly I thought it was ill-advised to even pass 
uh, the rescue plan when it was passed. I didn't think that made sense at that time. Uh, and, but, and I think we're seeing the consequences of that manifesting itself in higher inflation and labor shortages and the like. All right, so we got uh, what appears to be a resurgence of, of COVID in the state. We've got the federal government, the heavy hand coming down again. The CDC constantly uh, waffling on their guidance, waffles again and says, even if you're vaccinated in certain areas inside, wear a mask. What are you expecting from the governor's office at this point? Well, the, the CDC has made many mistakes throughout this pandemic. It seems in the last six months they've become very, very political. And certainly their decision that they made in the last uh, couple of days reeks of politics and it has nothing to do with rational science. Um, if you are trying to um, increase the number of individuals uh, who get vaccinated in our state, the worst thing you can possibly do is tell them, well, whether you get vaccinated or not, you're still going to do all, totally the, all the same things. It, it, it creates perverse incentives, and it makes no sense whatsoever. It was wrong, and quite frankly, it was foolish, and it's hurting more than it's helping in the pandemic. Yeah. The one thing that the CDC director has said in the last month that I agree with is she said this is largely becoming a pandemic of the unvaccinated. That is true. Ninety five percent of those individuals that are in the hospital in Mississippi today uh, were not vaccinated. And so uh, we certainly encourage individuals to make the best choice for them. Um, but we, we we do believe that the vaccine is effective. It is safe um, and it is helping save lives. The vaccine was uh, adopted during the Trump administration. It was Operation Warp Speed. I was in the room. Uh, many times having that conversation with the president yeah. and his team, um, I believe it's safe. I believe it's effective, but more than my, uh, much stronger than my views on the vaccine. I also believe in personal responsibility and ensuring that you have the right to make the best decision for you and your family because you know things about you and your family that I don't know. Totally agree. And so the heavy hand of government is wrong. I don't anticipate the state of Mississippi um, from from my office making any uh, any more major changes in mass policy. No mass mandates. No mass mandates. No uh, capacity restrictions. And I think in looking back, we didn't know it at the time, but in looking back, that probably was was just uh, maybe a premature policy. We didn't know at the time, but we were we were getting guidance from the the medical community, which has since changed, by the way, on that. And that so you're trying to govern and ma and make uh, I guess policy with respect to that. That's the input you had in April and May of 2020. We didn't know what we didn't know. Right. That's right. That's just a fact. Yep. We did not know what we did not know. But in July of 2021, what we do know is that. Um, in the 2010 census, Mississippi had the 32nd highest population in the United States. Mississippi had at least the third or fourth least restrictions in America. Yeah. Uh, 46, 47 other states had more restrictions than we did, and yet we have the 33rd most cases in America. Um, the per capita in the per capita cases, uh, we're actually under punching our weight, if you will, uh, and that's including the surge uh, that's occurred uh, recently. So again, I don't anticipate any major okay. uh, uh, changes. Good. Well, and what about the National Guard? we got to give them kudos, don't we, Governor? Unbelievable job those guys did. <laughs> I, I see you've got the shirt on, folks, with the patch, the National Guard. That I, is awesome. I could not be more proud of the men and women of the Mississippi National Guard. And, and to be fair, NEMA and the Mississippi Department of Health, those employees work. The reality is we had to figure out a way to put shots in arms, and those men and women of the National Guard, with no prior notice, really, put 800,000 shots in arms in a matter of months, and I couldn't be more proud of them. I've traveled the state thanking them personally, and golly, what a, what a great group they are. They are awesome. They, they proved yet again why they're, they're citizen soldiers, and not only can they defend us overseas from our foreign enemies, they can defend us uh, here on the homeland in the state of Mississippi against our... Uh, Major General Boyles, what a fantastic job. Uh, and he won't take any credit, of course, but he's at the top of that, and he's just got a fantastic team, but blessed indeed uh we got just a minute or so anything on the priority list for you coming up in the next 22 session just a minute or so well left. we're certainly going to push for another teacher pay raise okay. uh today i propose three thousand three hundred dollars thirteen hundred wow. across the board immediately a wow. thousand a year in the next two years the reason we can do that gerard is because we're in the best financial shape mississippi's ever been in we're in the best fiscal shape mississippi's ever yep. been in we collected a billion dollars more in revenue know. than was anticipated the other thing we need to do is we need to eliminate the individual income tax so with that billion dollars and the revenue that's coming in, we need to give more money to our teachers, and we need to give more money to 
our taxpayers. I like it. And, and that's what I'm for. I like it. And we got $1.8 billion coming down. Uh, I'm just going to plant a little seed here with you, Governor. I'd like to see you think about maybe a rebate to the taxpayers as part of that money to the extent that could be done based on, uh, say, the prior three years of taxes they paid. Just a thought to get some money to the taxpayers. People well, pay the taxes. They funded that. I, I support a pay raise for the teachers and a pay raise for the taxpayers. All right. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Governor.